Hello everyone. I'll go over one more uh, Fisher game from the Varna Olympiad in 1962. Of course, uh, the Olympiad during which Bobby Fischer supposedly had a breakdown, accused the Russians of uh, of uh, forging the results or something, playing against him, uh, organizing tournaments in a way that uh, was unfavorable for him. Of course, some of that might be true, but perhaps the, the majority isn't. But anyway, uh, he did have a great performance at the Varna Olymp Olympiad. I already show you one game. And in this one, uh, he was play playing against Karl Robach, a great chess player and a great theoretician. And uh, I think Robach provoked him unnecessarily. And he played the Scandinavian defense against Bobby Fischer, which is like showing a red flag to a bull and just provoking Fischer into playing what he knows how to do best and just pushing all of his king side pawns and destroying your king. And this is uh, a miniature which only lasted 20 or so moves. And I think that uh, Karl Robach got outclassed so badly that he must have been ashamed for years after this game. I, I don't know why he played this and I don't know how he couldn't have guessed that Fischer is going to destroy him. So we have uh, e4 by Bobby Fischer, we have d5, the Scandinavian defense, and after e takes d5, queen takes d5, Bobby Fischer goes for the main uh, variation of the Scandinavian with knight to knight to c3, chasing the queen away, the queen goes to d8, it could also go to, to a5 in some variations. Now we have d4, the main move, and here Karl Robach doesn't play knight to f6, which is the most solid way to play the Scandinavian, and now after knight f3, bishop g4, h3, bishop takes, queen takes, c6 uh, is the main move. Note that in this position black can't take the d4 pawn, because if queen takes d4, queen takes b7 is completely winning for white, white is winning the rook. So c6 is the move, and this is, let's say, the starting point of the mainline Scandinavian. But after d4, Karl Robach plays g6, and now... In about six moves, Bobby Fischer is going to have a completely winning position. And if you if you know about the fischer sozin attack, if you know about the Yugoslav attack in the Sicilian, this is basically what Bobby Fischer likes to play the most. And this is the setup that he knows how to how to destroy in a couple of moves. And there is proof for that. There has been proof even in '62 that he, he won about 50 games bashing down this structure, this exact stru structure. Now he starts with bishop f4, uh, preparing to castle queenside, of course. Bishop g7, queen to d2, knight to f6, castles queenside. Now already white has a lot more attacking prospects, and I think that practically white is uh, much much better already, and he has a clear plan of attack, and far uh, less weaknesses than black. Now uh, Robac plays c6, a slight inaccuracy, and now immediately bishop to h6. Uh, this defender is going to get exchanged off. And now that black has played c6, it's quite obvious that he isn't going to be casting queenside. That would be too unsafe with this unsafe with this diagonal that weak. So Bobby Fischer is almost certain that Robach is castling kingside, and he is immediately removing the main defender even before Robach does castle. And now he castles, we have h4. And this is now, uh, if you turned on the engine, I think this is plus one and a half or plus two. This is move nine against a very strong grandmaster. So an unbelievable uh, an unbelievable game. Now queen to a5 was played, which is another mistake. Of course, he's trying to create some counterattack on the king side, but this move was in fact completely losing because it allows h5. And you can't really take with either piece or, or anything. He played g takes h. Uh, taking with the knight is equally bad, or I, I think white would just play bishop takes g7, and after king takes g7, Bishop to e2 would be enough, just, just chasing the knight away and the queen is coming to h6. This is soon to be checkmate. So taking with the knight wouldn't work as well. So after h5 he took with the g pawn. Now we have bishop to d3, first piling on some more pressure, not doing anything to resolve the tension on the king side. Knight b to d7, knight g to e2, rook to d8, trying to activate his pieces, but you can see that this, uh, this rook and this bishop are out of the game and white is playing with all of his pieces. So now already if the engines would say I think it's plus, plus 3, so uh, a crushing game. g4, uh, continuing the attack, knight to f8, g takes h5, Knight to e6, trying to defend. Uh, now rook d to g1. 
And now we can see that all the pieces are simply perfect. Both bishops, both rooks, the queen and the knights are ready to jump in if need be also. And white is in this position uh, virtually playing two pieces up and this bishop and this rook are out of the game. King to h8, trying to save the position. Bishop takes g7, knight takes g7, queen to h6. Now of course threatening checkmate by taking on, on g7. Rook to g8. Rook to g5, uh, doubling rooks with tempo on the queen. So this is definitely the best move in the position. Of course, note that this knight can't move because of checkmate. Uh, this now, this knight, if it moves, it's it's checkmate. So whatever happens, it's checkmate. It's just completely lost. You can't play two pieces down against Bobby Fischer. Queen to d8, trying to get back to the defense. Rook h to g1. Now once again, uh, threatening, uh, threatening to checkmate. Uh, to checkmate black on uh, on the g7 square we have a knight to f5 and this is just a mistake because bobby fisher now takes bishop takes f5 and karl robach resigned this is move 20 and uh, whatever he does let's say it wasn't a peace sacrifice let's say he recaptures so bishop takes f5 just getting the piece back then rook takes g8 queen takes rook takes and this is of course, completely lost after rook takes g8 because of queen to f4. Let's say that would be one of the better better tries. And the the rook and bishop just can't measure up to the queen in this position. This is just this is just lost. And if he doesn't take uh, after bishop to f5, bishop takes f5, then Bobby Fischer is simply a piece up, and there's absolutely nothing to do. Let's say I, I think the engines would say bishop to e6 was the best move if he doesn't take the bishop. But just uh, let's go back to the beginning. So Bobby plays d4, Karl Robach knows he is going to play e4. Um, the first time he deviated was against Spassky when he played c4 in game one. And uh, I think du during the early 60s Bobby played only e4. So Karl Robach must have prepared d5. So d5, e takes d5, queen takes d5, knight to c3 is the most common move, so he had to know this, this would happen. Queen to d8 is the best move, d4 is the best move. This means that he actually prepared the move g6 and preparing this against Bobby Fischer is like you're trying to prepare some passive uh, Spanish against Anatoly Karpov. I mean, you know that Anatoly Karpov is going to play the Royal Lopez or the Spanish and you decide to play some weird passive position in which he is going to crush you in 2700 moves. And if you play this against Bobby Fischer, you have to expect Bobby Fischer to crush you in the next 10 moves because he did that. And that's exactly what happened. Bishop f4 and after after this position, Black has nothing. Black has to defend for the rest of the game if he manages. And now after h4, h5, there is no way to defend at all. And to have a position, okay, I will turn on the engine. Plus 3.2. At, at move 10, you can see the, the evaluation bar on the right side of the board. This is just this is as if Karl Robach was a 1600 beginner or something. An absurdly uh, great victory for Bobby Fischer, and uh, of course, uh, this is this was in the last rounds of the Varna Olympiad. Uh, the U.S. finished fourth. Uh, Russia, Soviet Union was of course of course first. Uh, Yugoslavia came in second. Argentina came in third. So not such a great score for uh, for America, but Bobby Fischer had a great performance on board one. Uh, okay, everybody, I hope you like this. Uh, crushing game against the Scandinavian defense and remember don't play the Scandinavian against aggressive players it's better not to do that and stay tuned for more chess thanks very much for watching bye